Hello students, I'm Sir RB. Today, I'm going to discuss about Lesson 7, Legal, Ethical, and Societal Issues in Media Information. Hello Olivarians, today we will discuss about Module Number 7. What do you think would happen if there are no policies about the legal and ethical use of media information? Imagine if someone claims the ownership of Mona Lisa. What would be the problem about it? Let's talk about first the legal matters when it comes to media and information. Fair Use Guidelines Fair Use Guidelines refers to the limitations and exceptions of the rights that are given by the copyright law to the owner of a work. For example, is when someone wants to use a copyrighted material, like for example books, videos, or songs, and he or she will use it for teaching, criticism, research, news reporting, and parody, then he or she may use it without the permission of the owner of the work. For now, let us focus more on parody, in which it is the most frequent way on how will you use a copyrighted material without violating the copyright law. When you say parody, it refers to a work that mocks another work in an inoffensive, non-derogator, and funny way. An example of parody is when you edited an image or video and you will use it for a meme. And now, let's talk about instances which exempt copyright permission request. First, the material only shows small amount of original work. Example of it is a crop picture, in which it only shows the small amount of the original work. Second, the material has been transformed completely from the original work. Like for example, a blurred image or edited image used for YouTube blog or video. Third, the material was reworked and used in a different way. Like for example, the original material was a science article but some parts were used for a song. Fourth and the last one, the material was used for non-profit purpose. Like for example, charts and images that were used for teaching. Now let's talk about intellectual property rights. When you say intellectual property rights, it pertains to the ownership of a person to his literary and artistic works, symbols, logos, signs, inventions, names, and images for advertisements and commercial use. Now, what you will do when you sow a copyrighted material and you want to use it First, is check who owns it. Second, get permission to use it. Third, give credit to the owner. Fourth, buy it if necessary. And fifth, use it responsibly. Copyright, patent, and trademark are the terms that lies under intellectual property rights. And now let's talk about the copyright. The copyright law protects the owner who can either be the publisher or the author of his legal rights for the distribution and utilization of his work which cannot be reproduced without his permission. For example, the book Harry Potter, it cannot be reproduced or utilized without the permission of the author, which is J.K. Rowling. And actually, it does not only limit on books, but also on other things like literary works, paintings, photographs, drawings, films, music, choreography, and also sculpture. The copyright duration covers the author's lifetime plus 50 years after his death. This means that the copyright for the materials belongs to the author while he is still alive. Upon the death of the copyright owner, the permission to use his work would be approved by the legal heirs. In the Philippines, if you want to secure your ownership to a copyrighted material, then you need to go to the National Book Development Board or NBDB 
or to the National Library. This is just one way on how will you secure a copyrighted material. Now, let's talk about the patent. Actually, patent and copyright law are just the same. It's just that patent is more specific when it comes to invention. Patent pertains to the exclusive rights given to an invention. Just like the copyright law, patent protects the owner from other people who wants to copy his or her invention. For example, you invented a robot that will help you to your daily chores. Then if you want to secure its patent, then you need to communicate with the government and process its papers. Now let's talk about the trademark. Trademark is essential when it comes to commercial use. And it also refers to the specific sign associated with a specific brand of goods or services. Companies use a trademark to differentiate their products from other similar and available products in the market. That is why we are always seeing logos when we are buying things to them. It is considered illegal to imitate brand names with a trademark because it is a form of fraud. And at the same time, we should refrain from buying those products because it is also punishable by the law. And now let's think of it. What if you violated the copyright law? That is what you call plagiarism. Plagiarism is a form of stealing by not recognizing the original owner or the work and claiming the material as his own. Requesting permission to the owner is necessary if you quote more than 500 words from a copyrighted material or if you think that you are violating the fair use copyright laws. How can you avoid the act of plagiarism? First is proper citation using endnotes or footnotes in which you should always take note of the author's name, the date the material was published, the title of the published material, and as well as the publisher. Second is listing the materials used in the bibliography should be observed. You should always take note your references and put it on the bibliography part of your research or your paper and use the APA format. Third, paraphrase the original text properly. Actually, copy and pasting violates the copyright law. And in order for you not to violate it, is first, you should read the passage carefully. Second is understand the material properly. And third, is write your idea on how you understand that material. This guidance will be useful for you, most especially when you will write your own research paper. And now, let's talk about what are the ethical issues when it comes to media information. That is why we will talk about netiquette. Netiquette is the proper attitude that an internet user should practice when communicating online. What are the guidelines to remember as an etiquette? First, when you send a message, put a brief description of its content on the subject line so that the receiver will know its content and if it is urgent for him to respond. For example, as when you will pass your output to your teacher via Gmail, you should always put something on the subject line in order for him or her to know what's inside that message. Second, when you receive a message from your superior at work or your client or for a student like you, your teacher, or school authorities, it would be polite to reply urgently. Acknowledge messages sent by a relative or friend by sending messages with thoughtfulness and warmth. Third, review first the intended message before sending it so that you can be sure that it is correct to avoid miscommunication. Fourth, do not send spam or chain message to your list of contacts. Let's think of it. What's the difference between a spam mail and a chain mail? When you say spam mail, it is a form of commercial advertising which companies send in bulk through email to prospective customers, just like this one. And now, what is a chain mail? When you say chain mail, it refers to an email which requires the receiver to send the same message to another person, just like this one.
Fifth, ask permission before sharing someone's personal post, photo, and video on social media. And that is why when you will always post something or share something, you should always write CTTO at the last part of your post, which means credits to the owner. Sixth, personal photos or videos should not be tampered out of fun or parody or disseminated in public, most especially without their consent. Seventh, in public forums or chat rooms, it would be deemed impolite to ask for someone's personal information. Eight, Introduce yourself politely and state your reason for communication before sending a message to a person that is not on your list. Remember when you were finding your classmates or your teachers for this new normal setup? Ninth, obscene messages, derogatory remarks on one's race or religion, and lewd photos and videos should not be publicly posted as this is awful. And those are the things that we should always remember as a good netiquette. And now let's talk about the societal issues when it comes to media and information, just like digital divide. Digital divide refers to the educational, economic, and social inequalities encountered by those people who cannot afford to have internet access and computer. It also pertains to the gap on the kind of information that is allowed to be accessed and distributed in a certain place. Like here in the Philippines, most especially in rural areas in which they find it hard to gain access to internet unlike here in urban areas, that is why they have limited access to information. And now let's talk about virtual self. What do you mean by virtual self? Virtual self pertains to the representation of a specific person in the virtual world which is only available when a person is linked to the internet. A person can be represented by his avatar if he does not want to use his own picture. This is an example of avatar. Not that blue one. Not also that one. Good. This one. This is an example of an avatar. Avatar pertains to something which is related with non-visual ideas. It can be also modified based on hair, facial features, and complexion of the user so that it can look like the user's actual self. Avatar is not only used on social media platforms, but also on RPG games. Another thing that can reflect your virtual self is by using emoji. Emoji or emoji originated from the word moji in Hongkong, which means character. It is used to represent the emotion and idea that the sender wants to express. Now let's talk about what are the dangers of internet or of media information. First is internet and computer addiction. Let us talk first about addiction. Addiction refers to the condition in which a person loses control over his behavior or actions in a certain thing. Let's talk about what are the examples of internet and computer addiction. First is virtual gaming. Virtual games are actually not considered as addiction when it is only for pastime. It only becomes addiction when the person playing feels the urge to play computer constantly because it is pleasurable even if he can no longer carry out his responsibilities. Second, Online Shopping Online shopping is considered as addiction when a person purchases products that he or she does not need due to sudden urge or impulse. For example, is your friend that buys something from Lazada or Shopee because it is sale or it is trending? Third is social media. The use of social media can be considered as addiction when the users tend to forget their responsibilities due to overusing of social media platforms. It can also be considered as addiction when the security of the user is anchored on the likes and feedback of the people on the internet. And now let's talk about the vulnerability to online crimes 
most especially when it comes to teenagers. First, it's cyberbullying which is the most frequent one when it comes to teenagers. Cyberbullying is a knack wherein an internet user does something offensive to another internet user like posting or commenting harsh words. They say that there are some reasons why there is cyberbullying. First is cyberbullies keep under peer pressure. Second is they are out for revenge. They are also power hungry. And last is they are just bored. Let us now think what are the effects of it to those who are cyberbullied. First is having suicidal thoughts, physical sickness, urge for revenge, and depression. Actually, some others say that those who are bullied are those who have the most potential to be a cyberbully. And last is we will talk about the exposure to violence and pornography. These instances are happening because of many corrupt websites, host, leak, or spread lewd videos and photography which can be negatively influenced minors to behave just like what they are seeing in the internet. This may cause an increase in crime rate due to juvenile delinquency. Guidance of parents can be also lacking which can be a factor to minors to browse dangerous internet websites. And that is why we should always think before we click. I hope that you've learned something new and you understand it well. Carpe diem. That's all for today. I hope that you've learned something. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Happy learning at home with lessons made easy by Olivarian Go Teach. One proud Olivarian.